so I said this in the in the email. Uh, what I kind of want to do is I'm, I realized the last, I don't know, six months, year, that people, if they want to be successful at LinkedIn, they, need, they really just need a lot of other skills, right? Um, you need to know how to use the platform. But then there, I'm finding so many people, they don't know how to communicate their offer. They don't really know what their product is. They don't know, they don't have social skills. They don't know how to do copywriting or storytelling or video and all that jazz. So what I'm thinking is um, I'm not a pro at all of those things, maybe one. And so, I'm, so what I'm wanting to do is find somebody like Simon who does video. I want to bring someone in. That's not today, by the way. That's not today. I want to bring someone in uh, probably once a month who's confident and competent enough to be able to do live Q&A. And just uh, is there like a, a fun way to roast someone where the questions are good, where you put on the spot? But <laughs> Is there like a word for that? <laughs> I don't know. You... You gave Wait, me the opportunity a while back, and I just want to say for the record that you were a phenomenal host. Thanks. This is fun. That, that the experience of collaborating with you was fun and professional and thoughtful. So Thanks, Tracy. To anybody considering jumping on with you, you should just do it. Thanks. Fun. Awesome. Awesome. I'll, I'll take that, and, and we'll put it on LinkedIn. JK. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, so that's what I'm kind of wanting to do is bring in somebody who's a, uh, a pro in some of those industries. So if you all have any ideas um, or people that you know and trust, feel free to send me an intro email. What I was thinking, um, so Tracy, is do you do you all have an actual event coming up in the next, I don't know, few months? Yeah, my next one is the beginning of April and then again the end of April. Maybe if you're up for it, because last time we brought you in to talk about events and it was like just brand new, it'd be really cool to see one in full gear, right? Like totally yeah. macked out with all the engagement and stuff. And that would be kind of fun yeah. if you're up for it. I would love to see that too, because I, I, I don't have the opportunity. Well, but neither of them are, they're my events, but um, the client focus is not a LinkedIn space. Do you, okay, cool. Well, if you feel like there is an event where it would be yeah. cool I'll for you, to, an eye out for it, for you would... to showcase, yeah, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, I'd be very interested in that. Um, um, that that's a big bucket, and it brings kind of a lot of things together in, in one spot. Um, I used to do a lot of events on Eventbrite. Is that what you use, Tracy, or do you use some that's, tool or something? That is my standard for any paid event, uh, just because it has all the back-end tools that make my job easier. Um the, the challenge that I run into is that 90% of my clients are nonprofits and um, faith-based nonprofits on top of that. And they are still figuring out marketing and social mm -hmm. media. And uh, so the process of pushing them um, even into Facebook and Instagram oh. and LinkedIn, and like, they're just not utilizing it fully yet. Um, and we sort of have to pick our battles. Yeah. You know what I'm seeing uh, quite a bit? So we work with a company that's not a nonprofit, but they work with nonprofits. So they do ad grant management for C3s. And um, so what we're finding, like nonprofits largely volunteer-based, but there's usually a core staff of employed people. And what we're seeing a lot is the board of directors and the marketing team for smaller size ones they're usually um they're usually active on linkedin but for their own personal thing and you can catch them on linkedin just just an observation with that kind of group i'm sure you've seen that too yeah most of the board members are professionals who are are either using a personal brand or a professional brand uh, i think that the disconnect unfortunately that i see so often is between the staff and the board members. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, we do a lot to align those conversations between the two groups. Cool. Very cool. Okay, cool. So we're going to hopefully get Tracy in when we have a, an event going full steam. Simon does video. So at some point in time, I'd love to give him the floor. Uh, Jer, what are, I mean, what do you want to talk about? Well, um, 
what I discovered that most of the companies that I work with, uh, their main problem is that they don't have their story straight. Uh, they don't know who to target. They don't know what they are delivering. And aligning that with their marketing, that's a big hurdle. Mm -hmm. And we use road mapping to accompany them and uh, get them a real road map, how they have to get their story straight and how they have to align their marketing with that story. Because if you treat them separate, they are always going uh, with a lot of marketing ideas, but they f don't fully develop one. I'm taking notes on what you're saying. <laughs> so I think, so like uh, having one consistent message from first handshake to close. Yeah, um, and it has to tie into the overall message uh, to, to the brand itself. Because if it's only uh, part of one uh, tier that they're going after, it's it's a, a big disconnect when they uh, reach out to the, the company as a whole. So what you sure. see is that people use LinkedIn for uh, a product, uh, yeah, product casing, but not for the for the company as a whole. And you have to align the whole company together because otherwise when people go to the website or go, go to uh, an, another re outreach to the to the company mm -hmm. they don't connect with the company and it's a real disconnect so they um, their sales cycle is not not in order mm, yeah yeah i've absolutely seen it especially when you choose a niche right and then yeah. there's like the it you present it's presented like you're an expert in expert in a niche and you might be and then when the consumer goes and they find that they're they're perceiving that it's not the main thing you do, but it's like a sideline item, even though you might be awesome at it. Yeah. And a lot of companies are treating marketing like they're a real big com company like Coca-Cola and they have to do the same thing. But when you're a smaller company, you have to treat marketing in a different way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sales too. Correct. Are, and it's what's... more easy. <laughs> Do you, are you comfortable saying what's the average company headcount that you usually work with? Um, from 10 till 50. 10, 50, yeah. That's where I, where I am comfortable with because yeah. if they are getting bigger, uh, the marketing um, managers that are there, they're very <laughs> difficult to persuade and change their minds because they know what they are doing, they think. Yeah, I've encountered that as well. And also, it just gets more complex. Yeah. Just so much more complex. And all of the different people doing outreach and the crossing over, right? And the, I forgot that you said this to this person, and we should have known that. And now we look like idiots. Yeah. And then you become more of a change manager than a marketing guy. Yeah. And you should ch charge for that because it's a real value, even though people might not be aware. Yeah. And that's one of the mistakes I made that uh, I put it in my service. Uh, but that's actually the item that uh, business development is the item that goes the most work into. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, I like picking, working with people who already have all their ducks in a row, but man, sometimes those guys can be far, hard to find. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be, it's so surprising how many companies, they don't have that. If they have the ducks in a row, um, the service they are searching for is different than that we often deliver at first sight. Mm. Yeah, I can see that. That's why I like picking clients that already have an event. Mm. They've felt the pain once. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. What about what about you, Mike? What do you feel like uh, would be something that's you're super strong in that we could do the the wholesome roast? <laughs> I. I'd, I'd like to talk about tools. I think I can lead a discussion about that. You and I could, Isaac. I mean, I think we're both kind of in the same, the same boat. And I, tools that, that, that save time, that, that provide the last mile of connectivity. You know, um, how does data get into pipe drive? You know, what are the steps to make that happen? And you know, um, there, there's a just, uh, I, I'm getting, you know, people are always bringing to me another tool. What do you think of this? What do you think of this? And frankly, 
I, I, I'm a shiny object looker. I'll take a look. I'll take a look. I'll take a look, you know? Mm -hmm. And there's become like a whole industry and a whole market around tools. And sure. in fact, I'm visiting with developers about developing a tool of my own here that would be, I don't want to spring it out here, but it's a tool that we would all use here. Every, every person on this call would use this application. And there's a lot of apps that solve little things. Uh, is anyone old enough to remember a tool called Sidekick? Mm, name sounds familiar, but I don't recall. We're getting it. near the days of floppy disks. Okay, okay yeah. I was Not playing quite. Wheel of Fortune on a green Mac screen back then. Yeah. But uh, there, there's, there's two, it was a tool that let, let you get data from one place to another, you know, kind of kept a little thing. And it was always there, always residents and stuff. So I just, there's a, there's a lot of, a lot of tools that do little things and stuff that, that save time. And I think that would be a nice discussion and I'd be prepared to lead it, but I'd rather join it with someone else being the expert so I could learn. <laughs> we <laughs> need to, we, you know, yeah. um, uh, there's a lot of different aspects to it. One that I'll point out that's particularly interesting is zap info for all of us. Zap info. And I have an, I have an, I have an account for it. So I can even demo tools. I'm not, not even tell you about them. We can demo this stuff. Fun, yeah. Um, uh, if it's soon enough, I'm not sure how, what tools I'm all going to have at the time, but that's one to look at. It's really good for LinkedIn folks. Awesome. Yeah, time is the hidden cost when you're on LinkedIn. Yeah. It really is. And as long as you can save time without sacrificing quality, I, I'm all for that if the, the cost benefit ratio is there for sure. Cool. Uh, so really quick, uh, Caroline jumped on. Just wanted to say hello. Feel free, even if you're working from home, to, to jump on. Nobody minds. Even if there's uh, kids in the background, it's all. It's 2020. <laughs> okay, cool. That's great. Also, Caroline, if you're a, a pro, oh, she did the chat. If you're a pro at anything, this is, this is your golden opportunity. <laughs> all right, so uh, I'm thinking what I'll do uh, with you four here that we've talked about this um, We'll probably just work it out by email. That's kind of what I'm thinking. And then we'll kind of put something on the calendar. That'd be awesome. I got Jesse coming in for copywriting, um, which is something that I, it's a skill that I've been learning. Did you have a good visit with Jesse, Mike? I had a great visit with Jesse and we awesome. can't wait to do it again. He's awesome. so cool. He's cool. And um, <laughs> uh, it's, it's, he's just a really swell person. You know, yeah. I, I dug him. I mean, one-on-one, -on -one, we were 45 minutes. You know, we, had, nice. we went right up to the last minute and had to cut off to our next call. <laughs> nice. That is, right? nice. Yeah, he's got that majestic, cool hair, dude, which I'm so jealous of, kind of like Simon has going on. <laughs> All right. So um, I would like to today kind of – we've talked a little bit about this in the past um, when the custom list – for account and individual lead exclusions went live. But I kind of want to talk a little bit about account based on LinkedIn because I feel like what happened here is probably this last summer, we're sort of like feeling the squeeze where I think there's a, almost like a mind sh perception shift on LinkedIn from being more individualistic to more uh, group, especially people I work with. That's kind of a trend that I've seen. And so what started happening is, and feel free to, to jump into on this, um, especially like Jaron Mike, since you are doing similar things, we're seeing a lot more people say, so uh, how, do you, how do you know this person? Uh, oh yeah, you talk to this person. And there's this new dynamic now of, it's not just between me and this person, they're bringing me into their work circles and I need to like be aware of that. And it, it's like it influences um, outreach. It influences messaging strategy. It influences how you organize things, um, how you create your list. It influences how you do top of mind stuff, right? Do you guys, have you seen that pattern at all or is it just me? Are you saying that the world is getting smaller and people are more tied to into each other? Uh, well, I'm saying that people are more willing to bring you into their group culture at work and expect and expect you to like know and remember and have and bring up conversations you've had with other people that they work with. I thought that was just Kansas City. 
No, man, I'm, I'm definitely having that happen more and more frequently. So, but that's also maybe because we started going down that, that trail. So um, I think that we have more diverse media uh, because our presence is not just an article um, or a post anymore. And, and I think that that potentially shifts the way that people interact with our presence, not just person to person, but our presence overall. It, it's becoming one integrated piece is I think the way that I'm experiencing it. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and the lines between a meeting in real life, a Zoom meeting, a phone call meeting, a post interaction, a, a video interaction, are all converging into a single focus point. Yeah, I, I would I would agree with that. And um, as like a kind of story example, so I, I'm hearing like I talked to Tony. This is not just case. This is not KC. This is like other big metros. They'll say so. You might have um, connected with several people at the company because you don't know who the decision maker is for sure, right? You can make assumptions based off of their role. And I'll talk to Tony, I'll talk to Adam. They get around to replying whenever they can. And then Tony's like, actually, Adam handles that. And then you miss it. And then Adam's like, yeah, I handle that. I talked to Tony about this. I saw, he told me that you messaged him. And it's like, suddenly you're there, but you're not there. Like what you're saying, Tracy. And I'm seeing that more often. And it's almost easier to persuade someone to give you the time when they feel like you're a part of their group like that. But it means you have to have done the work in that group. You know what I mean? So, so kind of, so what we've been doing and, and feel free to jump in and share your experience and whatever. So like if we're um, wanting to focus on a, a certain type of account, what we'll do. And Mike talked a little bit about this before. So before, when we, when we onboard someone, we'll just uh, save all of their, so this is a, a custom lead list, let's go to accounts. We'll save all of their clients to a list. And this is where there's a, a save cap. So if you have a client and they have like a thousand or 2000 clients, that's gonna be not only time consuming, but you're gonna hit the wall with saved quantity there. Yeah. But if they're a smaller company, We'll go to client list and then we'll exclude them like that, right? Which we've kind of talked about in the past so that we don't accidentally prospect an account that's already uh, their client. And then we'll, um, maybe we'll search within. Uh, I think one quick question in between. Do you have an easy way to get the client list uploaded to sales navigator? Oh, good question. Uh, what we've been doing is we just, and, and if there's a better way, let me know. Uh, I haven't found anything that just quick connects to sales nav pages. So what it would do is we have the, the client, like our client, write down their client list on a Google sheet. And then we'll use a column and say, do they have a company page? Yes, company page, yes or no. If they do have a company page, we'll save them to the client list. And if they do not, we'll exclude them using Boolean in the company name. Make sense? Yeah. Do you, do you have any thoughts on that? Almost a manual process. It's totally a manual okay. process. Yeah. You, can, you yeah. can pull up the company under company page and exclude them there too with the little red, you know, circle, square, circle, slash, if you want to exclude That's, companies that way. You, you absolutely can. And the limitation there is, I think there's 20 exclusions that you can do before it starts stopping you like you can't so if you're dealing with several hundred i find the list that doesn't scale yeah, yeah no this is yeah, that, totally for onesie right. for onesie twosie that that might yeah. be quicker but um yeah. i think you're limited to 250 on the at least on lead lists you're limited to 250. we ran into that we were adding people adding people and you see uh, how far it goes and it limit stops us at 250 for leads i i would assume that accounts you know might might be similar it might be similar it, I, I forget. That's a really good point. You could probably do client list one, client list two, 
as well, depending on what you're. What you're yeah, you can. That's what we did too. That's what we yeah. just broke them up into smaller things because you can yep. pick multiple ones at a time. So you're just, you know, we didn't. We tried an A through L, M through Z. Um, in one case. That's a good idea. So if you're wanting to focus on accounts, what we've found helpful is to save the accounts to your overall saved accounts because you can have you. I did a chat with. LinkedIn on this. So they said you can have an unlimited quantity of saved accounts. And I was like, that's awesome. So I saved like 10,000 accounts. And then I tried searching within saved accounts and uh, it just, it would not do anything. So I can search within my saved accounts right there. And then I can exclude, maybe I want to exclude a client list. Maybe there's somebody who's already converted to sales funnel, right? Like here's converted to sales funnel. Maybe I want to exclude them. So these are custom lists that you created underneath, right? That that's what they are under. Yeah, the saved accounts. Custom, right? The saved accounts means we, is every account that we've saved, where there are potential accounts that we'd want to work with, and then we're excluding, as far as the outreach goes, we're excluding clients and accounts who we already are talking to off of LinkedIn. Okay. You, yeah. you created each of these. Yeah. Yeah. So this this kind of what we're moving towards being as standard because it becomes really, really relevant and laser focused. And, but it takes more time onboarding. Like Jer said, uh, I shot myself in the foot I sh month one because we sunk all this time into setting it all up. But now it's, we, we find, I find that we're doing about, <laughs> we're doing about 50% less work um, as far as quantity. The time is comparable, but the conversion rates are just as good. So it's almost like if you have a list of people that you want to go through, it's like saying, okay, we have a thousand people to talk to. Let's do every month 200 instead of 800. And then as far as like, as a business model, I like that because it means we do less research and discovery time when we're switching focuses. Right. Anyways, just, it, it's helpful just from that st standpoint as well. And then, you know, it's the, once you have this, I feel like it's kind of just, you have two options. You can either go just down the list based off of what their title is in the company. And then when someone's talking to you, that's um, like you can view the account and the, all the employees that are there, right? Or you can just focus on one company at a time, work your way up on the list, basically. Like start with people who would want to know you. They're going to be lower on the org chart. And by the time you get to the the C level, they'll see that you already know a bunch of people in their company and the likelihood of them accepting that's going to be higher, which is what is what we found as well. Yeah. Same thing like with the board, like with the nonprofits, Tracy and the board, you talk to the founder of a nonprofit and they see that you already know a bunch of people on the board. They're going to be giving you the time of day more than if it was just, it's still, it's still cold, but in them, in their mind, there's, there's something else. There's more common ground there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, I, and I feel like on, uh, I feel like it's worth paying for sales nav just for this if you're doing account based. So do you get, do you guys remember Isaac Stunnebeck, the other Isaac? Uh, Tracy, if you got to bounce mm -hmm. out too, it's about that Ew. time, right? Thank totally you. cool, totally cool. See ya. So I've got a a, a friend whose name is also Isaac, and um, uh, he was trying to do account based off of uh, in just a free account. And there's not much that you can do, and so what. No. what but but there's still I feel like there's practices there that that you can do even if you pay for sales nav. And so what he'd do is he'd uh, find an account. It's more like you're doing less volume. So he'd find an account. He'd create the account uh, in in their CRM, and then he'd find the employees and he'd kind of just work his way through. And it's more of a manual process, but he's more using his CRM for that than the LinkedIn interface because there's just not much you can do on free or premium with like that. But anyways, you guys have any thoughts on that? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm writing a, I'm writing yeah, a book. Ahead, I'm, I'm writing a book on campaigns right now. And I had to do, I have to start with the free version of everything and then talk about how sales navigator at, you know, enhances that it's really an upsell mm -hmm. book to, to sales yeah. navigator. And I think what you're talking about on LinkedIn is you pick out the company on LinkedIn and then from within it, you've got a little bit of Boolean you can do. Um, on, on linkedin.com. 
right? Is that kind of kind of what you're talking about there? Or, or do you talk about the going to the company page over on linkedin.com and following from there? Oh, for if you have a free or premium account and you want to do account-based, what I find helpful is I'd like to emulate what you can do with in an account search, right? Yeah. So if you if you go here and you do, you can do like keyword and it's going to search all the text on the page. So you can go into Google and search like site colon linkedin.com slash company plus whatever your keywords are. And then you can use Google to do an account search. Because you can't do an account search in free or premium account, right? Or a company open up search. A free, open, up, open up a free account. Let's see what we can do. Let's just pop on up here. I mean, do this. It, I, there, there's a, there's a great, oh, do you want me to? Oh, no, I'm just switching browsers. You go, that was, you go ahead. You go ahead. You've got, I, I'm all loaded up with stuff here. You're, you got your <laughs> system all loaded up to, to present, not me. Because uh, and I, I find it that it's kind of ne it's necessary a lot of times for us to convert people from free from free to sales navigator and then from there into campaigns and accounts and things like that. But they start with a free account, <coughs> and if we can show them what they can do for free, get some one step in into it, and then and then from there we can say, but if you'd like to eliminate companies that have less than ten employees and stop wasting your time on small people, you could use Sales Navigator and, and upsell them quickly like that. But I've had a score of people recently that are, that are coming from the free side and I show them all they can do and then I tease them with what, sale, then I show them Sales Navigator. But you wanna see what we can do on, on accounts there? We'll just kind of, um, uh, just, just within LinkedIn, yeah. So I mean, you can do, like if you go to search. Yeah, search people all filters, yeah. So there's company here, which is just going to be the, the company name, right? Not that company. There's two companies. There's two companies over on the left, right there. Right. But this is only one at a time. That's right. That's right. What you mentioned going through the company to find where you are in an account. But if you're doing century link, there's like three, four, five century links and you can pick three, four, five century links and yep. put the, put them all in. And then you've got your, 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 um, yeah, it's all one word. Oh yeah. But it'll, it'll still pull it either way. Yep, so there's CenturyLink this, there's CenturyLink business services, there's CenturyLink that and stuff. And then down to, scroll down to the Boolean and put in, you put about five, five to 10 words in and, and do, do something, you know, to, to get them started, you know, yep. VP or director, whatever, and um, put a keyword sales up at the very top. Um, and, and that would be my search. I'd go, I'd go VP or director down here under, under, under title. And I put uh, sales or marketing up under search, and that would be my my way to do what we do on Sales Navigator as good as you could here. Yeah, that's you could totally do that, Mike. And then if you go to the company page, uh, maybe you've thought about this too. If you go to the company page URL, it's LinkedIn.com/company. Yeah, I want to grab and, a picture of that site. Yeah. I, I never use these site commands, so I'm really it's so cool. This is really neat. So. What you can't do in the free search is you can't search the content on the pages, the company pages, right? So that's, right. that's one limitation. So the, the friend of mine that I was talking to earlier this week, he was wanting to get a list of companies and he only had access to a free account. And so that's just a, lim a limitation. So you want to use LinkedIn as, as like a database query, basically. If, if you're doing an, the account search on Sales Navigator and there's a keyword field in there, is that not searching the page, the data on the page? It is, but if you don't have Sales Nav, this is like a, a workaround. Does that make sense? So yeah, the keywords is going to yeah. look at the at the at the company yes. page content. But it's if you don't do have same. if you don't have Sales Nav yet, and you have less um, flexibility in what you can do using Google, but it's if you if you want to give someone some advice and they just can't get sales nav, it's a good way to, to get the list. So, so roofing and maybe like, I don't know, um, New York, right? There you go. It's kind of a fun way to get some, some stuff there. Anyways, just, uh, just thought, just thought if you want to start with accounts and you don't have sales nav. Cool. Yeah, that's good.
I cool. took a screenshot. Cool. I have um, this thing called Premium Business, which is an old product of theirs. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm thinking, should I up upgrade to Sales Nav, Sales Navigator? Yeah, you know, I, feel free to chime in, everybody else here too, but in my opinion, Premium's not worth the cost at all. Yeah. The if you pay for sales nav, you get all of the premium features okay. plus sales nav, right? Yeah. And it's like twenty twenty US dollars a month more, I think. So, well, actually, if you have an older like legacy version, right? Pr sales nav, if you pay monthly right now, is US eighty dollars, and then annual, I think it's US sixty. Yeah, in pounds. It's, it's extra, if you have I an, I, I, I have run into people that have old premium accounts, but they were paying twenty five bucks a month since you know. 10 years ago, you know, yeah. back then. And they're keeping both of them because they just want to, they don't want to lose that, that, <laughs> that deal that they get. And, and, and you know, I had that too at one time and it just, I finally just jumped it. And I said, yeah, I get everything I want in sales navigator that I had over there. Be damned if I was getting a good deal on something I don't need in the first place. But there's, there's, there's $25 accounts floating out there that you'll find yeah. people have. Yeah. 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 Oh, Jerry, you were going to say something earlier. What was that? I'm sorry. I forgot. Yeah, what I want to say is that uh, you have to make a calculation for yourself. Um, if you use Sales Navigator, the time you save is more worth than you time you have to spend if you do it everything manually. Absolutely. And everybody has to make a calculation for themselves. But uh, Mike, for clients, I make it mandatory that they use Sales Nav Navigator because yes, otherwise I have to spend a lot of time convincing them and getting them up to speed and I have to do more searches and it's a hassle. It is. And it's not worth the cost that they have to pay to make it worth your time. No. That no. becomes, it becomes too, their, their ROI becomes too low. If they would have just spent an extra $50 a month. I, I, I agree entirely. I let them decide for themselves though. Cause we, we run that, we do as much as we can in LinkedIn. And then I say, now go for it. You know, the third of those folks out there are too small for you. And you're going to go chase them down, go all the way down the rabbit hole, only to find out they're too small. Yep. And the software could have just <laughs> cut them off. That's just right. like that. And how That's much right. time and effort do you want to spend on that? You know, or do you just want to do it now? Get your credit card out. We, we log them right on, right on the call right there. We'll upgrade you right now. You get a month for free. Yeah. So. So Simon, you might try the free trial. Just be aware that if you decide to ditch it, if you don't want it, uh, well, actually, sorry, be, notice two things when you do the free trial. Number one is the, the billing default is annual, and it's just a little tab you have to change. I've had lots of people, like, I'll tell them that, and they'll still miss it, and then they're like, I just accidentally paid $800 <laughs> because the, the trial expired, and then the default. So just be aware of that, and then the other thing is if you – if you decide to cancel sales nav because you don't like it, any messaging and tags and stuff that you have saved in sales nav will be gone. You'll still keep the connections and stuff, but that'll all be gone just to, to be aware of there. And if you, I don't think if you start paying again, I don't think that they turn it back on. Have you, I haven't no. actually done that. No, it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'd have to start a. You, you know, they have it. You know, they could do it. I mean, they don't <laughs> they ever throw any of that stuff away. But but they've chosen yeah. not to. Yeah, it's a way. To, I mean, that's why I buy Microsoft stock. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, any final thoughts here before we bounce out? No, it's been a good call. Thanks All right, call. awesome. Well, it was great having you all here. We'll see you next week, hopefully, and uh, see ya. Okay. Right. Thank see ya. you. Bye. Bye.